and welcome back. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Centro Circular Knitting Machine. Now the one I have here that I'm going to demo is the 40 pin Circular Knitting Machine. 48 seems to be a standard, but I'm going to be using this to make headbands, so I wanted something a little bit smaller. Some of the differences that I noticed with this machine compared to the 48 is this machine does not have a built-in row counter. The 48 does. So you have to count your rows manually. Another thing is the pen colors are backwards. So on the 48, the pins are black and then your starting ending pin would be white. And this one is just the opposite. So the black pin is um, what I use for my starting pin. And if you take a close look at if you take a close look at each one of these hooks or pins, they are numbered one through 40. And on this particular one, like I said, I use the black as my starting and it's listed, it's labeled as number one and the one next to it that I just pointed to that's listed or that's labeled as number 40. So like I said, I start mine on the black pin and I count my rows from there, but they, it all goes around in a circle, so it doesn't really matter. The other thing is you have two options. You have tubular knitting and you have panel knitting. Now for what we're going to do today, I'm going to leave it on the tube because we are going to cast on and cast off a tube on this machine. Now I purchased this machine on Amazon and it does come with instructions, but honestly it's pretty vague. So I went to YouTube and started looking for videos to show me how exactly I'm supposed to cast on and cast off because it wasn't very clear. And there's a ton of tutorials out there, but the problem I was running into was I was finding things with good information and good instructions, but the visuals, um, I was having a hard time seeing what was going on with the camera angle directly over top of the knitting machine. So I thought this would be a good opportunity to make my own video, change the camera angle a little bit, and hopefully if you've run into the same problem, um, this will be a little clearer for you. I've been knitting and crocheting for over 20 years, but this is my first time purchasing a machine and doing it this way. So it's been a little bit of an adventure. So grab a ball of yarn and we're going to get started. What I'm using today for this demo is just the yarn that came in the kit. And I use this for my waist yarn whenever I'm making headbands, but it's a, it's an acrylic, it's an acrylic, um, worsted weight yarn, nothing fancy. And I'm going to get started on my first pen. Like I said, I use the black pen on this 40 needle, um, machine as my first pin. So you can use it as your first, you can use it as your last. So the first thing I want to do is I want to hook my yarn around that first pin, whichever one is going to be number one. So the tail end is going to remain to the right and then my working yarn is going to stay on the left. And as you can see, I am now going to start in a zigzag pattern. So the next hook I went behind and then the third one I'm going to hook under. And then I'm going to continue behind, hook under, behind, hook under, behind, hook under, all the way around until I get back to that first hook. And it's important, take your time whenever you're casting on. You want to make sure that you get the yarn hooked under the pins that it needs to be hooked. And you want to make sure that you don't skip anything. So it's, this is no rush. So take your time and make sure you do your cast on correctly the first time, or you're going to have, um, you're going to have a problem as you start knitting, you'll have drop stitches and you don't want to try to fix that later. So I just continue this zigzag pattern as I'm cranking the wheel clockwise, which you can't see my hand and all the way until I get back to my first pin, which I am there now. So once I've made the full rotation around, I am back to my starting pin, the black pin for me, and I am ready to thread my machine. So this is my yarn guide or my yarn threader, whatever you want to call it. So I'm going to place my yarn, my working yarn through that threader. And then just below it is 
a tension guide and there's three different settings. You can see the little holes. You can see they're different. There's smaller, medium, and then a larger. I normally use this worsted weight on the middle one and it's worked fine for me. Um, the only thing I have not tried anything other than worsted weight, but from all the videos I watched, I was told don't try to use chunky yarn. This is, it doesn't play well with the knitting machines. Now that the yarn is set up, it's time to start knitting. So I'm going to use my wheel and I'm going to crank it clockwise. And as I'm going around, you're going to see each pin or each hook pick up that yarn. Do this slowly. Make sure as you're going that every single hook is grabbing the yarn. If you miss one, you're, you will have a dropped stitch and you're going to have to go back and fix that. So it's easier to take your time. Like I said, with, um, earlier whenever we were casting on. It's easier to take your time and do it right the first time than have to start all over or chase drop stitches. Okay, so we've now completed one row and I am back to my starting pin, my starting needle hook. And since this machine doesn't have the counter attached to it, you have to keep track of this manually. So I'm gonna show you what I use. It's just a simple row counter um, you click it manually and every time I come around to my black pin I'm just gonna push my button and add another row and this is how I keep track of it on this machine for my headbands I have a set number of rows that I like to knit so it's important that I keep track of how many rows I've done and this is the way I do it if you are keeping track of your work and you're just measuring it with a tape measure or something as you go along, then this part is not necessary. You can skip it. So now that you've taken your time, you've made sure that all of your needles have caught, you've cast it on correctly, and you did that first maybe row or two, and again, made sure that everything was in order, you had all of your stitches picked up, you can continue knitting and knitting and knitting and keep cranking that wheel until you get to the place where you have enough rows or the item you're knitting is the length that you need it to be. If only I could knit 11 rows that fast in real life. So for this demo, I have knitted enough that you can get the idea of how to do this, how to get your rows done, and now we are ready to cast off. So after completing the number of rows that you needed to knit, you are going to stop your machine just before you get to that first pin that you started with. So my last pin in every row was that white one to the right of the black pin. So that's where I've stopped. Now, the next thing we need to do is we need to cut our yarn. Um, a good guide would be to kind of try to wrap your yarn around your machine maybe two times, at least one and a half. You want to make sure that you don't run out of yarn whenever you get to this part. So this, I think it went around about one and a half times and it will be enough, but two times you should have plenty of yarn. So I'm just going to remove my yarn from that thread guide or yarn guide. And I'm going to just go ahead and put it in the middle so it's out of the way. And now we're ready to start um, start removing this from the pins. Now you definitely want to do this part slowly and very carefully. So we're going to crank this wheel one more time all the way around and we're going to start releasing the yarn off of our hooks. So you can see where the yarn is going as I'm moving the wheel. There's still little like two little pink teeth that each hook slides between as it's releasing the yarn and your loops are staying on that. So you need to make sure that's where those are going to stay until we actually remove them. So, you know, again, carefully, slowly, take your time. You don't want to release anything and drop a stitch and then chase it. So, and take your time. this is the point where you want to stop. And as you can see, I'm back to that black pin and I went just a little bit farther than what I should have. 
but it'll be okay. I will still be able to catch it and not lose anything. So yeah, I went just a tad bit farther than I should have when I was cranking this wheel, but it's a lesson. So now is the time to stop and grab my the tail of my yarn that I had left inside of the um, machine that I had left in the middle and get a darning needle. Now this is actually one of my favorite ones. It's a self-threading needle. Um, I purchased it at Joann's. I think it's Clover brand. Anyway, they're just it's just really easy to thread. So you just kind of hook it on there and you don't have to actually put try to put all that thread through the eye of the needle. But with that said, just get a darning needle. Okay, so after you have your tail threaded, then we're gonna start with number one with your first pin. And I need to stop moving this machine. And I have to put my needle through the hoop, through that little loop that's on, that's stuck on my um, pin because I moved the machine a little farther than I should have that it just is a little extra work. So I went ahead and I threaded it and then I'm just gonna use my needle and lift it off. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna do that all the way around. You can see where, um, the, where the yarn is like looped around those pink teeth that I described earlier. And if you don't go too far, this part is very simple. So moving from the back of my machine, I've just put the needle in the yarn and that little loop, and I didn't catch all of this. So I've got to go back and make sure I got all of those, um, all of those pieces, all of those pieces um, hooked so I don't lose anything. All right, so finally I got that hooked and now the rest of this is the easy part. So your needle just easily slides right underneath that loop and you're just going to pull up your yarn. And make sure that you, you don't wanna twist this, so make sure that every time you are pulling your, um, pulling the thread off, the yarn off, that you're looping it from the back, from, you know, you're going from inside the machine and you can see that I'm doing this as I'm going around. And as I thread each stitch, it is getting released from the machine. So I'm going to keep doing this all the way around. And sometimes it's easier if you kind of hold the stitch in place. You'll see this in just a second. If you kind of hold that stitch in place so that you don't get it, um, so you don't pull it off the machine before you get your needle in it. So you can see right here, this is what I'm talking about, that I'll kind of hold the next stitch so that I don't pull it off while I'm pulling the thread through the previous one. And like before, I'm going to speed through this a little bit because this would be like watching paint dry. And it's not really necessary to watch all of it. And I'm getting close to the end and you can see now that I've zoomed out a little bit that as I'm releasing, as I'm getting the needle through the loop, it is releasing it off of the hook. So I only have a few more left. And I'm getting right at the end. And I am down to the last two. I just have to lift that off the hook. And then this is my very last one. So I just go ahead and advance it a little bit and put that needle right through that last loop and pull it up. So now you have successfully cast it off and your tube has been released from the machine. And if you're making beanies or hats, this is a perfect way to cast off because it's relatively simple and you'll be able to see here in a second that you can just pull on that yarn that we just threaded around your, um, your loops and you can pull that and it will completely close that hole. So it is perfect for the top of 
your hat or your beanies. So that is some basics about your machine, um, how to set it up, how to cast on your yarn, how to knit your rows, and then finally how to cast off. So once you have the basics down, it shouldn't be too difficult to move on and start making some pretty cool things with your new knitting machine. Thanks again for watching and don't forget to hit the like and subscribe for more tutorials.